All right. Good evening, men of refuge and maybe some lady visitors, which are, are welcomed at this unique time, this unique season for us, our new normal uh, for the time. Uh, it's funny, just a, a moment ago, uh, Marty and Vic and I were just kind of laughing about starting. Um, actually, we we're starting about a minute early. We don't even start in time. And then we thought, well, you know, we, we do typically when we're in the cafe. We we start in time, but we don't start with prayer. Uh, we start with some fellowship, hanging out over some coffee and snacks. Uh, and so Steve would typically be bringing in pizza. Uh, and sometimes, uh, you know, Randy would do that uh, as well. So if you guys are out there, good to, well, I can't say good to see you, good to be seen. Um, cookies, of course, we'd always have from uh, our pantry. But we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Maybe you're doing that. Enjoy that. We're, we're not getting to do that. Maybe next week we'll, we'll bring some cookies in. If, if, if I'm not eating alone, I, I'm, I'm thinking that might be good. So we'll do that next week. But uh, excited for tonight. Uh, we want to kick off, as, as, uh, as we do before we get into praise, kick off with some prayer. And wanting to, wanting to, uh, to bring up those, those requests um, that typically the guys, you guys, would, would write down uh, a, a real special part of our time. I really, really appreciate that. Um, that. You guys, you take the time, you write out a prayer request, things that are important to you. And if they're important to you, they're important to us as, as your brothers when we gather together. And uh, some of those are recurring um, and that's okay, and, and we bring those to the Lord uh, on a weekly or regular basis. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to be bringing up some of those as the Lord puts them into mind, and then uh, then Vic will lead us in some some worship, some praise. So let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you uh, for tonight, Lord. Thanks for making this way uh, possible uh, for uh, the brothers uh, and their visitors. Uh, but first, to get together, um, as we're used to doing, and, and just that, that time, uh, we kind of break away, and, and we're typically sitting in the cafe, just enjoying the fellowship, and, uh, and just waiting to hear from you, and looking forward to singing to you. Uh, and so, Lord, thank you for at least this, uh, this close resemblance of that. And Father, thinking uh, of some of those requests that, that are, are those that we need to bring up weekly, and, and Brother Ed would be remembering, reminding us uh, to, to join him uh, and his heart for, for veterans uh, and their families and, and active military. Uh, Lord, he would remind us to bring them before you because of the sacrifice they make for us um, and, and these folks that are overseas. Some are, are dads, some are moms, and, uh, and they're away from family, and it's tough, Lord. It's a challenge. And so, Lord, we pray for those, especially those that are, are part of our refuge family. Uh, Lord, just thinking, thinking of those uh, like John, who's uh, away serving, and um, uh, with Natalie back here, and Nicole and the family. Uh, Lord, uh, encourage them, bless them. Lord, provide uh, for them, Father. Uh, Lord, we pray as well for those vets that are on the street. Uh, they are homeless. Uh, these are folks that, that have served us, and for whatever reason, um, just maybe uh, hearts are down or, or minds aren't, aren't working as they should, and uh, a variety of reasons. But Lord, we pray that, that you would direct them to, to the help that is there uh, for them. And ultimately, Lord, you are that help. Lord, you're that present help in whatever trouble they're going through uh, at any given time. And, and certainly this time, this season, with the coronavirus and, and all that relates to that. So, Lord, thank you for, for that. Thank you for those that serve us. Lord, we also would pray often, bring before you um, our self-employed uh, brothers uh, and sisters, but we would be thinking of, of the brothers that would be represented in, in that cafe on a Thursday night and some of our brothers that, that are self-employed, like Todd and Mike and Marty and, and Bob and, and, and others that I'm forgetting. Um, but Lord, we would bring it before you and we do tonight and ask you to provide, Lord, uh, in a special way and, and maybe at this time in, in a very unique way, but Lord, that your provision would be there. Lord, that the trust in you would, would grow uh, in, in this time, not diminish and Father, uh, that just makes me think there are those that are not self-employed, but perhaps underemployed right now and unemployed right now because of what's going on. And um, Lord, they're, they're struggling with that. Uh, their, their desire is to provide, 
um, and, and yet wondering how. Uh, Lord, I, I pray, we pray, Father, that their hearts would find peace and rest in you. Lord, you'd give them wisdom on, on their due diligence uh, and what they need to do, radical changes, I'm sure. Um, but Lord, that you would just uh, encourage them that, that, you'll, that you'll be there through this time and, and you'll give them the wisdom on how to wade through this, this season, this short season, we pray, uh, of the, the, the virus crisis, Lord. And God, we do pray for that. We pray that it would be short. Lord, we, we pray that you'd be magnified by the solutions that are provided. Lord, that wisdom from above would just be poured out on our leaders, our president, and our governor. But certainly on the national level, Lord, and for D.C. and, and, and those that are, are giving advice and counsel to our president, Lord, may it be wisdom from above, Lord. Wisdom from above to just to knock this thing out and, and get things uh, on track, um, and and yet, Lord, during this time, we know you're you're doing good stuff. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you so much that, Lord, you are the one that can redeem messes like this, and, and only you can. But you do, uh, and we've seen you do it, Lord. We read about it all the time in, in your scriptures, and and we're seeing some of those stories already, and lots more to come. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for that, Father. Lord, we pray to. Uh, for just broken families. Um, some of the brothers just have issues. We all have issues, but there's just difficult stuff they're walking through with their families. And, and Lord, we pray that you would invade those situations. Lord, you'd bring peace and reconciliation and restoration, Lord. Please just bring healing, Father. Father, we commit our, our time to you tonight. Um, Lord, we, we pray that it, that it honors you and it draws us closer to you and makes us more like you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, well, thanks for praying with me. Uh, real quickly, as, as I had forgotten, I'm sure Josh would want me to not forget, as he's back there in the booth, that um, uh, these uh, events that we are doing, that we're streaming, all of them, uh, Fireside Chats, Women's Study, Men's Study, uh, Wednesday Night Study, Weekend Studies, they're on, on three platforms. So they're on Facebook Live, they're on our, our website, and they're on the Refuge app. So if something uh, fails, you've got some backup there. So heads up on that, and uh, lead us, brother. Hey, we are kicking off our, our next book. We are uh, going to launch a Second Thessalonians. We finished First Thessalonians last week, the, the second half of chapter 5. And as I mentioned last week, uh, just by way of reminder, we, we chose uh, First and Second Thessalonians uh, as a, a re result, really, of our study in Acts. And as we looked at the churches that, that the Apostle Paul and his team planted, we thought, well, let's go back and uh, look at the letters that he wrote to those churches in the order of the, the, the letters and the, the sequence of time, the chronology uh, of when he wrote them, in First Thessalonians uh, being the first, and Second um, Thessalonians didn't necessarily have to be the, the second letter that he wrote, certainly the second letter to, to that church, but it works out that that was the case. So roughly a, a year later, pens this letter, uh, more ministry to the church, and, and, and not just them, the church at large, right? So, uh, and, and that's us as well. So I'm excited tonight. Uh, we have, as some of you guys know, uh, a teaching rotation where uh, intermittently uh, uh, Marty and, and Paul and Todd and Mike uh, will come into the sequence and, and assist me on that. And, and so Marty is going to bring us the first chapter of 2 Thessalonians, and I'm looking forward to getting into the Word with you guys. So Marty, take it, brother. Alan. Thanks, Alan. And thank you, Vic, for um, that great worship. You know, blessed assurance. You know, we have so much more than just promises to rest in. We have God's assurance through his word that he will never leave us, never forsake us, always be with us through whatever we're going through. And man... That's, that's just comforting to me in these times to know that we have the assurance of God that he's walking the, right there beside us. Whatever we're going through, whatever struggle, whatever uh, joy, you know, joyful moment with our kids and our grandkids, he's right there, but he's 
there when we weep and when we need comforting. So, amen. Um, God bless. It's, it's good to see you guys tonight. I mean, I can picture like Vic, just the whole bunch of brothers out there. You know, picturing the Mikes and the Todds and, and even Teddy. I, I, I hope Teddy's watching tonight because he'd shout out a big amen like Teddy always does. You know, he always lifts our heart in these times. And, and ladies, too, don't want to forget about you. We hope you're, you're having this opportunity to tune in tonight. My, my daughter, if, if she's walking to, watching tonight, she'll get a kick. She she'll, she's always hears about these breakfast burritos we do with the men on our Saturdays, and she always lowers her voice and goes, I'm a man, and she'd put on a hat and <laughs> dress up. Yeah, she always jokes about that, but man, brothers, I can't wait uh, to see in person again, but for now, we're going to do it this way because this is what the Lord has planned for us, and I, I'm confident that he's going to work just as well through his word here as he would as if we're right in person. So without any further ado, let's start getting right into Second Th Thessalonians. Um, last week, as you remember, we finished up First Thessalonians, and if you're new kind of to our study tonight, you might remember that in Acts 17, Paul planted a church there in Thessalonica. Uh, he was only there for about three weeks, but God, God planted these seeds into very, very rich soil. And man, that church just took off, started growing. So the church grew. Men and women were being freed from these sinful lifestyles, uh, freed from worshiping these useless idols. Families and lives were, were being restored, and hearts were starting to turn to Jesus. But with this growth came great resistance, great persecution, See, in Thessalonica, you could worship whatever God you wanted. And man, they had hundreds of them you could choose from. They had Diana, Aphrodite, Apollo. Worship whoever you like to get whatever results you want. Now, Thessalonica was also the center of a major trade route. Men from all across the country would pass through town. So when these travelers were confronted by the evangelists from the church, they asked, you know what, What's, what makes your God so much different than all of these other gods that I have to choose from? Well, the church there in Thessalonica responded. The other gods, oh, Night and day difference. All those gods are dead. They're useless. They're, they're made out of stone, clay, and wood. We worship, though, the one true living God and his only begotten son, Jesus. So the church in Thessalonica was being heavily persecuted. But here's my question for all of you watching tonight. Suppose, suppose for a moment, men, ladies, that someone tried to tell you that they could do, that you could do anything that you want to do. Oh, just have complete disregard for all the rules, for all the laws. Just completely ignore the, the feelings of others. You could then kind of live without restraint have anything you wanted to have. You could have a new car, a new house, a whole new lifestyle, maybe even a new head of hair, right? <laughs> but for only 10 minutes. Oh, only got it for 10 minutes? What would you do? Well, you probably wouldn't take them up on the offer, right? You'd say, ah, just not enough time, right? But what about a day? if you could do anything that you wanted to do. 
a month, a year, no restraints. Have anything you want. In fact, indulge in yourself in a whole lifetime. If someone were to offer you that, what would you do? Well, as followers of Jesus, we stand firm. We respond with a resounding no. See, we have learned a very hard lesson that no sin is ever worth our time. It's not worth the price when you compare it to spending an eternity with our Heavenly Father. So Paul is writing this letter to the Thessalonians who were being persecuted. And let's begin our study. That's kind of where we start to get into it. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Paul, Silas, and Timothy were the three missionaries who helped establish the church there in Thessalonica. Since Paul, Silas, and Timothy were still together at this point, at the writing of this letter, most scholars agree that it was written anywhere between three months to a full year later. Notice in verse 1 how it says the church was established. Look again at our text. In God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the foundation of our faith. Although we're connected to the community, uh, like we're connected here to Huntington Beach, right? The Thessalonians were uh, connected to the city there in, in Thessalonia, right? But our foundation for both of us remains the same even today. We are rooted in God, the Father, our Father, and Lord Jesus Christ. We're rooted in God's word and rooted in what God's Son, Jesus, has done for each of us. Verse 2, he says, Grace, Grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I have to be honest. Whenever I hear this phrase or read it, I'm reminded of Pastor Chuck Smith. And he says, you'll never really experience the full peace of God until you first experienced his grace firsthand. God is our wellspring of grace. It flows from him freely, and it is offered to all those who would just call on his name. God's gift also, it's a free gift. It cannot be earned, but we are still called to share this grace with others, especially in these unsettling times. Now, how many of you guys, men, ladies, have been to the market lady, lately, right? Have, have you seen all those people just frantically going around, just grabbing that last tube of toothpaste or taking all the toilet paper, right? We've all been there, right? Uh, let's, let's be the first, though, to offer them God's grace. Many of these people today, they're, they're just scared. They're out of work. They're, they're not knowing what their tomorrow holds. But we, family, we, followers of Jesus, we know what tomorrow holds, and we know who holds tomorrow. So let's be that example to the world of God's grace. Amen? Let's reach out to them in love and patience and say, here, really, you need the last thing of toothpaste? You got it. Last can of chili? Here, 
I'll be fine. I've got soup in my cupboard. I've got some top ramen. You know, I'll, I'll be just fine. But if you need this to have your foundation, <laughs> hey, j- just take this can. You got it. God's great grace, God's peace, God's peace only comes from knowing Jesus Christ. And through his death and resurrection, our relationship with God is restored. I'm reminded of the song that Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Our, my broken life was restored because of God's great love for all of us. Verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other so that we ourselves boast of you. Among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Paul thanked God often for the work that God was doing in and through the church. Their their faith was growing because of this. It was growing strong as they trusted God to provide all their needs, to guide them into their next steps of growth, their, their next missionary journey. Paul prayed for them for their, and boasted of them, for their love that they had for each other. This was also another sign that God was present in their lives. Paul was kind of boasting and boasting on him. He just went on about him, kind of like we do with our grandkids, right? Kind of, we, we play the grandkid game, like my grandkids are better than your grandkids. You know, we've all played that. Come on, fess up. I, I, I do it all, all the time. We, we right now have number 10 on the way. In fact, Athena uh, is ready to pop with our number 10. So... Uh, yeah, you know, I might get the call. I might have to run off. So sorry, guys, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> I, I promise we'll finish up here. Well, why was Paul, the question is, why was Paul bragging so much? Well, let's look at the text. It says, for their patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Today, guys, ladies, family, I get to brag on all of you. I've seen it already in this church. Thank you for your patience. As you persevere through these trying times, our God is just so, so very good. And I promise you, He will use these days to strengthen our faith and to remind us just how dependent we are on him. We are also called to endure through these persecutions, through these trials, so that we can look back on these days, guys. We can look back on these moments of doing without, doing with less, And we can say, look, look, world, at the faithfulness of God. He's been faithful to me, and he'll be just that faithful to you. And he'll, one day, we'll be able to come and say, come, today, and taste the goodness of God. Verse 5, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer. 
Paul is declaring here that all of this that you're starting to see that they're doing is evidence that God's judgment is right. The endurance, the growing faith in the church, and that their love for each other. Paul is saying that all of these things add up to the evidence of God working in their lives. See, the truth of the gospel message, it just didn't go in one ear and out the other. It was taken into their hearts. God was transforming the very lives of his children like he does us. God was reshaping their desires, reshaping their motivations. God was transforming their hearts. The suffering that they were willing to endure demonstrated that God was working in their lives. That suffering that they were going through was a test of their faith, but the suffering also made their, them stronger and stronger in their relationship with the Lord. Seeing day to day how we look to him for guidance. We look to him for provision. We look to him to be our everything. Verse 6. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you and to give you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In these verses, Paul is reminding the Thessalonians that although they are suffering now, your, your suffering, guys, won't be forever. Our God is a just God. And Paul here points out that evidence. He says, God is going to trouble those who cause you trouble. Unlike kind of our current judicial system that is sometimes flawed. Let's face it, it's flawed to be honest. Uh, only because it's run by man. We do the best we can to be fair, uh, to have evidence but it's still man-made. It's run by man, driven by man. But we're, we're flawed. It, this is man-made justice. But God's justice is always 100% fair to all parties. God is unchanging, unlike us, right? God, God is uncompromising, God is impartial, and God, our God, is a righteous God. We never have to worry about getting back at those who harm us or slander us or maybe take the last roll of toilet paper or take all the chips off the shelf or walk by with the car to just clean off the thing of Pop-Tarts, right? God will always ultimately judge all of those fairly. Notice in the text, though, we also are promised rest when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. We can have this rest and peace today, knowing that our future, guys, like we sang about, is assured and Jesus is preparing a home for us right now. And all we have to do, very simple, put our lives in his hands. Trust him. Follow him. Let him guide us. It's a rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, verse 8, in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul, though, is clear. There is a judgment to come. To all those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel. Jesus said in John's gospel, chapter 14, that it's simple. If you love me, 
just keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. So we don't have to do this alone, but the Holy Spirit will, inside of us will help guide us. And it's so that he might abide in us forever. He's called the Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But because you know him, he dwells with you and will be in you. And he has this last promise I love. He says, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you again. And we long for that day, brothers, don't we? Sisters. That someday we're not going to have to fool with these bodies that are failing us. We're not going to worry about getting up at four o'clock in the morning and driving two hours to get to work, only to be said, oh, we don't have a work for you today because of what's going on. So you take the long drive home. Someday we won't have to worry about that. Jesus said it simply, if you love me, keep my commands, commandments. But those who do not know the Lord do not obey him. In verses 9 and 10, Paul is going to explain this judgment on those who do not obey him. Verse 9, these, the ones who disobey God, these shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he comes in that day to be glorified in the saints and to be admired among all those who believe, because our testimony among you was believed. The punishment is everlasting destruction. Men, ladies, have you ever seen a building demolished, like a high-rise in, in Las Vegas or something? Have you ever seen that? Well, pretend for a moment that everything you owned in your life was suddenly put into that building. Your home, your car, your work, your hobbies, your talents, and, and now... Put in there all the people that you love, your friends, your family, your grandkids, everyone, everything that has value to you. Well, on that moment when they take that plunger and they push it down, suddenly destroyed that's everlasting destruction but that only happens when we don't know Jesus others you know might have known Jesus but you are eternally separated somehow from them and from God now let's draw another picture picture for a moment on that same, in that same building, your friends, your loved ones, your kids, your grandkids, all that you've loved, suddenly they're put inside this huge safe, we'll call it a safe safe, right? 20 foot thick walls, steel, iron, no worry for food or oxygen in there. They have everything they need. And it's huge. Lots of room to get through this disaster. Well, when this plunger comes down, there's only a small rumble. Because 20 foot thick walls, right? Solid iron. Well, that's how it is when Jesus comes. We're safe. Because he is our safe place. He's the one who will come to let us out into our eternal home in heaven. With God, then, we will be with our friends and family. 
See, there are only two options here. Eternal destruction and separation from God or to spend an eternity in the presence of God. Let's finish up here. This, is, this ending is kind of Paul's prayer uh, for those that are enduring hardship. And I believe this is also Paul's prayer for us today as we endure through this time. Listen to his words closely, men, ladies, family. Let them speak to your heart. Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of his calling and fulfill the good pleasure of his goodness and work and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is God's word for us today, to continue praying for each other, to, con to continue in your calling, whatever it may be from God, but search out these new ways. He's going to start using the tools he has given you in many new, different, and exciting ways. Never forget that we have the power of the living God living inside each of us and these tools that he's given us. He's going to use these tools to bring him honor and glory. Paul's relationship with the various churches um, went far beyond just being a teacher. He was more like a, a spiritual father and friend. He sincerely loved his people. And as we reach out to the world, let us also be that hand of love, that light of love. Let them see Jesus in our lives through our actions, how we reach out and respond to each other, the patience that each of us have. You know, when, when we get locked up in our, our rooms, our homes, and we're going stir crazy, and we know we want to get outside, well, do as much of that as you can safely, right? Six foot of distance, keep, your, keep washing your hands. But in the same way, have patience for those. As, as you endure maybe some guys that cut you off on the freeway. Ha have patience with, with your boss who, you know, says, well, him I'll let go to work, but him I can't. So you don't understand why. Have patience as you endure. May we all continue to grow in our relationship with each other. Even though, brothers, sisters, family, even though we're separated now, how sweet the celebration is going to be when we get together again. That's all I'm saying. Well, God bless you guys. Stay safe, stay warm, stay close with your walk with Jesus. Make connections as much as you can through phone, through the internet, through Zoom meets. And let's show that our God is bigger than any disease. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the body of Christ how it remains flexible in these times. Father, we just ask you during these upcoming months that you just break down walls, break down fences that we've put up and, and cultivate new, new land in our lives 
that we may be able to claim it for your glory, for your purposes. Lead us and guide us in your way. We just pray in Jesus' name. Amen.